All right. I'd like to welcome everyone to another lesson. And today we're going to be talking about LFOs. So what is an LFO? You've probably seen the word LFO. Um, you've probably seen it even in software. So if you've tried to work with Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase or anything like that, um, there are software synthesizers or virtual instrument plugins, and you've probably seen the word LFO. So what is really going on with an LFO? Well, to start, LFO is an abbreviation, right? It stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So to understand that, we need to understand all of those words, right? So a low frequency oscillator. Okay, so what is an oscillator? Well, you can see on my little synth right here that there are two oscillators here, oscillator one and oscillator two. So an oscillator is a fundamental waveform generator. So you can choose between whatever waveforms are offered. In this synth, I have saw waves and I have square waves and a triangle wave. Common waves in synthesis are going to be sine wave, square wave, sawtooth wave, triangle wave, and we have also random waves and everything in between. And so the wave shape gives you the timbre of the sound. So what does an oscillator do? Well, it takes a fundamental wave shape. Let's say that we are using a saw shape, and that's where I have my setting right now. If I open this filter up, we're going to hear what that saw wave sounds like. Okay, and we hear that as a solid tone. It's making a note. Why? Because the wave is oscillating at a frequency that is measurable. So that's how we get our notes on a piano or notes on a guitar. We say that A is at 440 hertz, and hertz is the measurement that we use to measure frequency. So in this case, we have a fundamental waveform. We have a saw wave oscillating at a specific rate or frequency, and it's creating this tone. So what is, what is a low frequency oscillator? What is the difference between a low frequency oscillator and a standard oscillator? Well, when we think of an oscillator, we think of something that is producing an audible tone. And so to understand that, we need to understand the range of human hearing. Humans cannot hear below 20 hertz, and they cannot hear above 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So the audible spectrum of human hearing is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So an oscillator can oscillate or it can it can have a frequency anywhere between that range and we call that audio rate because it creates a discernible tone to humans so when we go below that 20 hertz rate that is considered to be a low frequency oscillator because it is still oscillating but it is below the spectrum of human hearing. A good definition of a low frequency oscillator is any oscillation that is occurring below 20 hertz. And you can see that on this synth, the rate of the oscillation is shown with this LED. We can have a visible cue of the rate of this low frequency oscillator. Okay, so what does a low frequency oscillator do? Why do we need them? Well, low frequency oscillators are probably the most common source of modulation in synthesis and certainly the most popular. Okay, so what is modulation? Well, modulation is simply defined as a change over time. 
So if I just have my oscillator one going through the filter and coming out of the amplifier, it is just going to make a solid consistent tone with no variation. Let's hear it again. So unless I do anything to this wave, it's always going to sound exactly like this. There's going to be no change in this wave. And even though this is a fine sound, it's not very musical, right? We want to give some variation to this sound. So an LFO is a great way to do that. Now, An LFO is essentially just another oscillator that is below 20 hertz that we're going to send to different points in the synthesizer and we're going to modulate those parameters. So one parameter that we can modulate is pitch. So on this synthesizer, the LFO has two waveforms. It has a square wave and it has a triangle wave. And it also has a rate, which is going to affect how fast or slow it is oscillating. And it has a depth control. So the depth is basically how much, right? How much of this wave are we going to blend in to our modulation point? Now, if you are talking in a more fundamental sense, the depth actually refers to the amount of voltage that we are sending. But on this synth, we have a handy knob that will control the amount of voltage we're going to send for us. So let's get this going at a kind of moderate rate here. And I'm going to take my patch point out. So I'm going to take the LFO output, which is basically the voltage of this wave, and I'm going to send it into the input for oscillator one. And what this is going to do is affect the pitch of oscillator one. We're going to modulate the pitch of oscillator one using a triangle LFO at this rate. And I'm going to slowly bring up the depth and you can hear what it does. So I'm going to open the filter. So we're familiar. We're familiar with this sound by now. So I'm going to slowly bring up the depth and let's see what happens. Okay, so I hope you can see what's going on here. The pitch of oscillator one is being modulated by our low frequency oscillator. So right away, we have a much more complex and interesting sound going on. And if you're familiar with vintage or old school video games, you might be familiar with some of these sounds. These were the primary sound effects that were used in the original gaming systems and games like Pac-Man or anything like that. So that's where these tones came from. They came from synthesizers and they came from LFOs that were modulating these parameters. Okay, we heard what the LFO sounds like modulating pitch. Now I do want to make a quick point where an LFO can still go into audio rate. A lot of LFOs are fast enough to go into audio rate. So when you bring an LFO into audio rate, it technically turns into frequency modulation. And what that means is you're taking a, another audible tone, a second oscillator, and you're blending it into the original oscillator signal. So let's hear what that sounds like. 
Right now, it's a little bit below audio rate because we can still see the individual pulses. When I turn it up so that it becomes solid, that means it's oscillating at an audible tone. So let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, and you can hear that I kind of found a sweet spot there. And the reason that that happened, why it kind of locked in to a sweet spot, is because those two frequencies, the frequency between oscillator one and the frequency between our LFO that is oscillating at audio rate was a complementary frequency. It wasn't dissonant, it was consonant. So it was a consonant interval, and we got this really fat tone that came out of it. So you can create very complex harmonic sounds with a single oscillator and a single LFO. And once again, we're only modulating the pitch parameter so far. So let's try to modulate some other parameters. Um, let's, let's modulate the filter, okay? I'm gonna take the patch point here and my LFO out I'm going to put it into the VCF input, which it stands for Voltage Controlled Filter, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're going to control this filter with some, with some voltage, and the voltage of choice is this LFO. So let's try it out. The filter is controlling the frequencies that we're hearing of this wave, because it's oscillating right now, but I have the filter closed, right? As I open it, it's revealing the full harmonic spectrum of the wave, right? So if I have it open, and if you don't fully understand what a filter does yet, go ahead and look up my other video on this channel called What Does a Filter Do? It explains the filter in a lot more depth. But right now, we're gonna modulate this filter. Okay, so it's partially open. And let's go ahead and take the LFO out and put it into the VCF in. And let's pull our depth up. Okay, so you can see that this LFO is now modulating the filter cutoff at this specified rate. And since we're using a triangle wave, it has a smooth glide up and down between the open and close. So essentially, if I take this out, that would be the same as me doing this manually. Okay, so why bother with that? Well, LFOs can basically act as extra hands. So once you decide how you want to modulate your wave, you can have the LFO do it for you and you can move on and make something else happen. Um, so they're really great because they basically set parameters into motion automatically for you. You don't have to do it yourself because you'd run out of hands pretty quick. Let's, let's do the same thing again, but let's hear the square wave and let's, let's hear what that sounds like. So I'm gonna pull up my, my uh, filter. Okay, I'm going to switch it to a square wave. All right, so we can hear that it's more dramatic of a sound, right? The triangle is smoother. The square is more dramatic. And that's because a square is basically like an on-off control. A square goes all the way up on the positive side of decibels, and it goes all the way down on the negative side of measuring decibels or voltage. So we have a more severe 
cut off sound. Now I'm going to increase the, the depth. Okay, that is the sound of an LFO modulating the filter cutoff. So I wanna thank you for checking out this video. I hope the video was helpful in defining LFOs and seeing how they're used and exactly what they are doing in the synthesizer realm. And I invite you to play around with LFOs today in your software synth, or if you have a hardware synth, give it a try. So thanks again, and have a great day, everyone.